Free System Pot 3. So now let's on our results page, since we're going to be using, we need to send information to the head of the page, let's actually write out some tags. you don't know what the hell this is, uh, then you should probably stop watching this. Okay, so I closed body tag, closed the Janelle tag, so now I have a proper web page. Now, instead of installing jQuery, you can just call it externally because it's hosted by people like Google, who's really nice. And you can get this code off their website. You basically paste this into the head of your script. And now we can execute jQuery. Yay. So now let's create some space to write some JavaScript code. Space is really good to have, right? Let's just see if everything's working. This should have worked okay, okay. So the first thing, let's declare a document ready function. Everything will run inside here. So now we're getting down to the nuts and bolts of creating a page system. Like I said before, it's really easy. And you can apply it to all your projects and customize it however you want once you understand how to do it. And you're going to understand how to do it when you're done watching all these videos. So we need to declare some variables first. Let's write out a comment. Not declaring, <laughs> declaring variables. And the first variable we want to declare is the page, which is always going to be one when the document's first ready, right? It's right, I'm just telling you. The next variable we want is variable how many items per page that we want to display. Let's actually do that. Per, for this example, we use three. Obviously, you can change that however you like. The next variable we need is items. And this is going to be how many rows that the query found. And remember in the previous video, we already figured that out by doing this. So if we can get the count of this class, then we know that's how many rows of data there are. And you can do it like this. So items is now however many rows our query finds. That's really helpful. Oh boy, the next page we need, or variable, is the last page. Or the how many pages there are, what the last page number would be. So page last, let's call it. And this is a JavaScript function. We need to do some math in here. Basically take items divided by how many items per page. And that will give you what the last page is. So that's really helpful too. And now what we need here is, well, I guess we don't need it right now. Let's continue, my friends. So now we need, we have all of our variables here. Now we need to use them, right? Write out a comment just to be organized called return. Or wait, what? What's going on in my head right now? Set page. We're going to create a function called set page. And this function is going to be used to change the page. We're going to call it each time something happens going to be really easy. Okay, actually we need a parameter here called page. 
so that, you know, makes it real easy. <laughs> so the first thing when we set our page, we have to use a function called slice. Slice is a jQuery function that lets you affect a range of indexes within an array. If you don't know what the hell that means, I really don't either, but you'll see how it works. So let's call or reference our row. Remember, that's how this is actually the fuck. Slice. We're gonna slice it up real nice. And you know what? Go ahead and copy this. Not once, not twice, but thrice. And I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna have three places where we're slicing. This first line here is gonna slice the back end. So if you can imagine, we're we have pages one, two, three, four, five. If we're on page three, this first line will hide pages one and two. This slice will show page three. This slice will hide page four and five. Get it? Oh, I hope you do. And now we need to do some more math. And this is the proper way to do it. Page times per page. And we have to hide it. Remember, that's hiding. Well, let me show you again. That's hiding the back end, the pages, like the first pages. Now we need to show what the current page is, like this. Page times per page minus per page and a comma and then page times per page. We want to show it. This is going to show what page we're on. It's going to show the contents of this class with this range right here. Get it? Oh man, I still hope you get it. And this is the back end right here. We gotta hide it. This is easy. Page times per page. So now this should work. Let's see what happens. Well, I actually don't know what's gonna happen. There's page one. Well, okay, we didn't even call the function. <laughs> Let's call this function we just made. Set page and let's pass page one into it. See? It worked, guys. Of course we need a way now to access the next pages, the previous pages, and how to get through all of these trees of data. But now you can see this works. Let's continue. <laughs> 